Hey guys, it's Mana here, and I'm back with more One Way to Die. I was actually given a product code for, or product key, whichever one you want to go with, for the Deluxe Edition, which I'm super excited about. I would, I'm sticking with random. I, I, you know, I get the idea of choose mode, but random is funny. I love random. Suddenly, you snap awake in, in your bed, mouth dry, eyes sticky, and a slight film of moisture covering your whole body. As you blink away the fog of that last dream, the one where you died, a feeling of dread creeps over you. You are barely able to recall the last few seconds when suddenly it is replaced by a pretty nasty headache. Despite feeling that horrible things are about to happen and your pulsating cranium, you remember that today is the last day of the glorious Finnegan Brothers Fun Park is open. While the closing itself is truly a crime against humanity, the upside is that all the rides and games are free. The fried foods are heavily saturated as well as discounted, and there's a chance to win your own elephant. I'd like to point out that when I first played this game the first two times, I thought they were talking about a stuffed elephant, but apparently it's a real elephant because it sat on me and killed me. <laughs> Who would pass that up? Even with the specter of death lingering about. But do you stop to take an aspirin for that wretched headache? Or make a sandwich to fill your empty belly? Or just say fuck it and head to the car? Yeah, I'm still pretty adamant about adamant about that um, aspirin. You enter the bathroom in a blinded fury as the headache repeatedly stabs at your brain from all sides. Story of my life. After almost giving up hope, you spot it out the corner of your eye lying capless on the floor behind the toilet. Picking up the bottle and giving it a swift shake, you are rewarded with six little pills that you try to swallow, mushrooming what saliva you can in the process. The majority go down easily enough, but the last one just happens to get lodged in your throat a bit, causing you to hack and cough. It even hurts a little bit as you begin to worry about choking on it. Luckily, it dryly finds its way down to your stomach. Washing it down further with some foul-tasting sink water seems to help. That was a close one, you think, as you wash your face in the sink. Okay, maybe you're just being a bit paranoid about that. A smile crosses your face as you remember there is no time for such dark thoughts. The fun- it's the fun park's last day! Yes, perhaps it's time to get going. To the fun park! Might be able to sneak in a sandwich still. A little something to fill your belly. Yeah, I like that. Just a few minutes in the kitchen were all you needed to whip up a delicious sandwich to tide you over until you get to the fun park. But not even this mouth-watering beauty was enough to keep those creeping fears at bay. You were a little too jumpy when you were spreading the mustard, but it's only a butter knife after all. What could really happen? You chew each bite very cautiously, randomly glancing up at the clock and then back to the table again. Every other time you take a bite, er, every other time you take a drink of water to wash down your mashed sandwich clumps, secretly fearing you'll choke if there's not enough liquid lubricant present. You toss the plate into the sink and make your way to the front door as you swallow the last remaining piece. Delicious. Not as satisfying as fresh corn dogs, but it'll do. Let's go! You cruise out the front door with the fun park on your mind. Without missing a beat, you are you get into your car and back that big bad bastard out of the driveway. After straightening it out in the street and nudging the neighbor kid's bike, you go flying down the road at slightly over the speed limit just as his bike tumbles over. It seems like nothing can stop you now. As you pull up to the first red light, you realize you're low on gas, perhaps critically low if you aren't careful and coast most of the way. You press that fancy button that gives you an estimate on when you'll run out, and it seems to be enough to make it to the fun park and back. Barely. Maybe. Looking up from the dash, you see a gas station on the corner adjacent from you. Yeah, I'm gonna get some gas. You pull up to the, to the pumps and start filling your metallic beast when your stomach gurgles. Normally, this is the part where you'd go into the little convenience store and purchase some suspect piece of food or a packaged treat, but because you made that sandwich earlier, your body is sated enough to make it to the fun part. Besides, all that super cheap fair food is going to be amazing. Finally, the handle goes click and you're all filled up with gasoline. You swipe your card through the pumps reader and get your receipt. In a matter of seconds, you're back in the car and waiting to merge into normal street traffic so you can head to, back to the freeway. Oh. You head up to the you head up onto the highway and notice there aren't a lot of cars on the road. Very odd. As you kick it up a few more miles per hour, you notice an odd sight up ahead. Seems like traffic has stopped. Perhaps an accident or something. You pull up behind the last car and notice that the driver is missing. In fact, there doesn't seem to be any drivers in any of the cars. Confused, you get out of your car and start walking ahead. 
Just then, the mothership crests the horizon. You stand in awe as it zooms up over you and hovers in place. A little hole opens up and a beam of light appears around you. Yep, this is that scene that you've seen a thousand times in movies and TV shows. However, this is a little different as you burst into flame, a flameless carbon pile instantly. Okay, you have been lasered by aliens. All oh, the music stopped. I like the music. God damn it! <laughs> You snap awake again from what seems like a dream where you died in a most horrible manner. Clearly, you couldn't have. <laughs> you, you say to yourself, it was only a dream. Still, you can't shake the feeling that dreadful things await you this day. And just like in the dream, a roaring headache shoots into your brain right on cue. Okay, this makes sense now. It's like a dream within a dream within a dream. You keep waking up from dream. Every time you die, you wake up from the dream. Okay, that's really cool. That's a, I didn't even get that concept until now because this part changed and it allowed me to know. Oh wait, I'm the saboteur. Is that what you're telling me? A saboteur lyrics? That's me? I hope that's me. I really do. As the last of the dream dissipates, you remember that today is actually the last day the Finnegan Brothers Fun Park is open. You close your eyes once more to fight back the piercing pain of the headache, take a deep breath, and ready yourself for the hopefully imagined dangers lurking outside your bedroom door. Upon sitting up, your throat begins to tickle as if a small feather had gotten loose in the air in there and, failing to stifle it, you begin to cough, rubbing your throat only seems to co coax a coughing fit to break out. Standing up and heading toward the bathroom, your eyes bulge as the coughing intensifies and spittle flies out of your mouth. Almost immediately, you fall headfirst into the door, dropping to the floor and clutching at your chest wildly. Then it comes on even heavier. As your air begins to run out, you pull at your own throat. Clawing like a maniac, blood begins to spray out with each ragged hack now, trickling out your nose as well. Your vision begins to blur, then everything fades to black. You have choked to death. On what? Who the fuck knows? You press the flatten button on your bed's remote. That's right, you have one of those fancy hospital but for home remote controlled adjustable beds. The bed jerks a few times, but then starts to slowly straighten itself out. You lie there and wait for it to stop moving, when suddenly it begins jerking wildly. Before you can roll off, the bed snaps in half upward, which also bends you completely in half at the waist. Spine snaps, guts pressed out through every open hole. You died by bed. Well, that's... That's sad. Okay, so we're gonna take that aspirin. Wow. Maybe a bath might help, you think as you stroll into the bathroom. After filling the tub and slipping into the amazingly warm waters, you find that it is so relaxing that sleep steals upon you instantly. The first time you go down, the water pours into your mouth and nose, waking you up just as quickly as you had passed out. Your eyes burst open, glance, ar glance around real quick, trying to assess the situation, then slowly you begin to fall back into the warm embrace of slumber. Your body slides down as you completely relax, bringing your face down to the point where the most irregular snort would fill your nostrils with water. You breathe heavily all of a sudden, tempting the water, but no, it waits a few more minutes, then gushes right in there, only soaking your head a little and blinking occasionally. Do you, you do nothing else but finally slip under the water and start breathing it in until your lungs are full. You have died by tub drowning. Um, this has actually happened to someone in my, in my family. So that, that kind of got real. Um, my dad's cousin's wife, I believe, she had fallen asleep in a hot tub and she drowned because of it. So that just got real. Aspirin. Okay, so we got the aspirin. I'm going to get that sandwich because mm, antifreeze poisoning. Wow. You run to the kitchen and, in a fury, throw together a tasty sandwich to sate the beast in your belly, inhaling it in half the time it took to make it. You pop open the fridge to see if you can find something delicious with which to wash it down. You spy the juice jug in the back and started downing it. In yet another, in yet another record time, you finish all the cool and really vile liquid in the container, letting it slip from your fingers as the first jolt of pain explodes in your stomach. Last week, you thought it'd be a good idea to fill up a similar-looking jug with antifreeze to keep it chilled. You had read something on the internet that it worked better that way. Probably on one of those forums, you know the ones. As the antifreeze courses through your system, you fall up to the floor and begin to writhe in pain while vomit streams from your mouth. Had you lived, you'd know better than to believe anything you read on the web. Idiot. Okay, antifreeze poisoning. 
I actually had a dog that died because of antifreeze because someone they didn't realize he had walked into the garage and someone had closed the door and antifreeze smells and tastes like water or at least I'm told it tastes like water I don't know if it actually does I've never tried it but dog is thirsty sees water drinks there you go okay aspirin sandwich okay on your way to the kit on your way out of the kitchen your phone informs you that the milk delivery bill is overdue probably should pay that shit pay your milk bill by phone as you head out yay technology disarm trap awesome you cruise out the front door with the fun park on your mind without missing a beat blah 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 uh, for whatever reason, while sitting at the light, you think that you should call the tree trimmers and have them take down that big-ass tree in your yard. Um. I want to disarm their trap, but, oh, well, I didn't make it to it anyway. You pull up to the gas pump, slapping it in park. Getting out, you focus primarily on the ridiculously high prices while cursing the rotten fucks who do derailed alternative energy spitting in disgust you start filling the car up and go to inspect your windshield for cracked caked and dead insects to clean off then it, it appears in the distance some asshole who thought it would be cool to drive the same unarmored humvees used in iraq comes barreling around the corner toward the gas station unfortunately this same asshole was texting some inane message to someone else as the hummer slams into a fire hydrant knocking it loose the pressure of the water in combination with the impact is enough to send the hydrant flying from the street and towards your face with graciously greet which graciously greets you with open arms you have been blasted by a hydrant well then aspirin sandwich Damn it. In the kitchen, you open the fridge and bust out a cold, refreshing, weary numbing bottle of soda. Not quite food, but it'll do the trick until you can make yourself a proper snack. Glancing around, you become dismayed at the missing bottle opener, which is usually sitting right next to the can opener. Curses. With faith in skills that should not exist, you try to open the bottle with your teeth. Sure, you've seen it done a million times. Can't be that much to it, am I right? <laughs> you clamp down on the camp with your more the camp the cap with your molars, mashing the bottle top as far back as your lips will let it sit. Just one wild twist undoes the cap and it bursts off from the pressure, lodging itself into the back of your throat. You claw wildly at your esophagus and slam your back against everything in the kitchen in a desperate attempt to eject the cap. Sadly, this never happens, dumbass. That's hilarious. Aspirin. Sandwich. Damn it. You pop into the kitchen and start snatching up all the necessary ingredients for your double-decker sandwich when that new lava lamp you just bought catches your eye. It is tantalizing, and you do vaguely remember something funny involving them in a microwave you saw on the internet. Without a second thought or a concern for the nagging dreadful feeling from earlier, you walk over and pick that sucker up, then head for the microwave. Ten minutes is, a, is crazy, but maybe five will produce the effect you're optimistically confused about and hoping for. You lean forward, almost pressing your face against the door in childish enthusiasm as the lava hits an important and critical heat, then explodes forth from the microwave with great force. Glass, fire, microwave, shrapnel, and hot lava lamp blast into your face, ripping it apart like wet tissue paper. And while it does kill you pretty quickly, it was not quick enough to make it a painless death. I wouldn't imagine so. Okay, so this is going to be my last attempt, because I have so much I need to do today. <laughs> you enter the bathroom just as the headache comes back with a vengeance and snap kicks you right behind the eyes. The pain is truly severe, hideously crippling even, and absolutely more than enough to cause your vision to short out for the time being, taking what poor balance you had with it. Stunned and completely jumbled, you fall forward and smack your wee head on the sink edge, cracking it just like a fresh egg. Blood gushes forth, spilling across the white tile as you slip into sweet, warm unconsciousness, never to wake back up. Ever. Okay, so I'm going to call it here because I'm out of time to record for today. So 
I'm really excited about this. This is a great game. I love this so much. Um, One Way to Die is a free game on Steam, and the deluxe edition upgrade is like 50 cents, I think. So it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you like this whole random thing. Like, it's, I love this. The only thing I would change is how the how quickly the music ends. Like, I would find a way to loop it through the game because I love the music. And it, it, it ended before I got my fill of the game. I'm still not done with this game. It is too funny. And there are so many things that I have yet to see yet because I have only made it to the park once. I've made it there one time and I got set on by an elephant as soon as I got there. So, definitely going to be coming back to this game. I absolutely love this game. It is too funny. Although I will admit two of them were, in this in this one, two of them were, you know, kind of too relatable for, for my being. But, you know, it just happened to be random chance that they that they were, you know, relatable for me. Which is really weird. So, I'm logging off now. I'll see you guys later. And remember to do something nice for a stranger today. You may just save a life. Bye!